the word opportunity is the key word. It's, a, it's an opportunity to give opportunity um, to people who really want to get off the streets. One of the things I've been terribly struck with is how many of the people I have met who have been homeless, who have been homeless in the last six to nine months, and who previous to that had been working for the last 15, 20, 25 years of their lives. These are folks who really didn't do anything wrong except pick the wrong employer. In many cases, they uh, had a, a husband or a wife who had cancer, and all of their money went into their co-pays because they were working and had insurance. So these are the accidental homeless. We really refer to them now as economic refugees. And I think what Dan said about breaking apart the stereotype. Stereotypes grow because they're based on some truths. It's just, they only become dangerous when we apply them across the board. So there's nothing wrong with them unless you use them in a wrong way. So what we're talking about here is going to, unfortunately, not serve a huge number of people who are out on the street. It's only going to serve those people who are wanting to be drug, alcohol, and violence free. That's a core value of Opportunity Village. Right now, the way Eugene is facing homelessness is with policing and emergency medical care. The head of housing from Portland came down, and he said Portland's been doing the same thing until recently, and that if you hired a whole bunch of consultants and put them all together and said, figure out the most expensive <laughs> and, in, and ineffective way to deal with the homeless, they couldn't possibly top what we're doing. We're spending tons of money. We've got nine police officers just in downtown 22 blocks. That's at a quarter million dollars of policemen. About 78% of the tickets are going to people who are homeless, and they are for sitting on the sidewalk, leaning against a building, or crossing the street, not at a right angle. This is really happening. I didn't believe it, but I swear to you, it's happening. If we took those resources and used them in another way, we'd have a whole different situation. Homeless people need some place to go. We already have them. I live in this neighborhood. We have many homeless people here, many of them. And we're caught between being kind of go away and, oh, I'm afraid to help. I don't know how to help. It's that dual parts of us um, that are kind of at war. So what we're doing is not proposing bringing homeless people here. What we're doing is talking about taking them and having some of them have their basic needs met just for a short period so that they can then start meeting their own basic needs. Opportunity Village is all about regaining your dignity, regaining control over your life. We have three different things going that are going to help people become self-sufficient. One is people will be growing their own food, establishing organic gardens here and another site so that they can feed not only themselves but give some back to Lane County Food Bank. They'll be building alternative housing. Most of the folks on the streets have been living the American dream, the recent arrivals from the street, have been living the American dream. They had the two or three bedroom house in the park. Now they don't have it. And this job economy, which the LA Times just revealed, true statistics are not the 9%, but they're between 17 and 20% of the people in this country who want to work are not working. Now what are they to do? We as a community have to address this one way or another. And I don't know that this is the best way to address it, but I think it's one of the ways that we'll put some of the pieces together. So we'll grow our own food. We will change what we think of as a successful way of living. <clears throat> to be proud of myself, I don't have to have the three-bedroom house. I can actually have a really intelligent micro house that's environmentally sound and that can be set up in someone's backyard under Eugene's current laws that permit this, is to take advantage of some of the things that Eugene has already provided for. The other thing, in addition to building our own alternative housing, is folks have been um, volunteering from the business community to do mentoring and guidance in how to start micro-businesses, cottage industries. These are people that worked all their lives. They're not drinking, they're not doing drugs, and they want to work. So the business community here has said, we will help. 
I think most of you know 50% of the new jobs in the United States that are created every year are created by small businessmen. That's who creates new jobs. So there's a lot of pieces here that make a lot of sense. What we need for a site criteria is a place that's in the urban area so people can get to jobs, get to transportation, get to services. Here we have the uh, bus station uh, right here and the bike path. So there's an easy way in and out. We need it to be um, a toxin-free site or easily remedial. This can be done here. The, we need it to have sewage and water, else it's going to cost twenty or $30,000 just to put, put in those services. And the whole point of this is to have something that is so low cost, we can afford it. We've got fabulous programs through St. Vincent's, through Shelter Care, through Looking Glass, but they all cost more than this emergency economy that we're operating in. So that's why we have to be thinking so totally out of the box. What we're proposing for this site, Andy is going to talk to you about more. But initially, we're talking about trying to find, when we met with Shelley Berman, who is, as you know, your superintendent of schools, he was telling us how many homeless kids there are going to schools here in 4J. And you have them here. So we would give a priority to the children from this school who are homeless to be able to live very close nearby and have a stable life so they can take advantage of this incredible school. Our first neighborhood would be devoted to families. We'd have families and we'd have five or six mentors. So about 30 people who are homeless and about five or six people from the permaculture, from the business, and from the social services who actually live on the site. It'll be self-managed because that's what works. All of us know we manage ourselves better if we're responsible for ourselves than if someone else is telling us what to do. We'll, we'll be adhering to the uh, core values. And there will be a 501c3 corporation that's the umbrella organization, but it will be self-managed and it will be moving towards self-sufficiency. We only expect to be at the site if this is a decision for three to five years, because then affordable housing is planned for that. The Jefferson West Side Neighborhood Association has unanimously voted that that's what they'd like to try to make happen here. And we've been working with Paul Conte, who has been the president of that, and he's very supportive of the project, as long as we make way for supplemental housing, as long as we control um, the number of people we have and have triggers that um, we don't add people to the village unless all of us together feel that it's working. So I'd like to introduce Andy Heben. Um, Andy is an urban planner. Um, he spent a summer and wrote his thesis on urban tent camping. And he spent an entire summer traveling throughout the United States and actually lived in one camp um, for a month. So he'll tell you a little bit more. 